This is a chair such as you'll typically see in many meeting halls around the country. Our goal today is to show the various steps involved in reupholstering a chair like this so that if somebody asks you to do 250 of them one day, you'll know the steps involved and the tools that you're going to use. Here are the tools that are unique to the upholstery trade and that you'll be using so that you can become familiar with them. First of all is an Airlocker U630A staple gun and this shoots a fine wire staple. It is disconnected from the air so I can open it now safely. Don't have the air connected when you open it up to add staples. Always have it off. Have the air off on disconnected when you do that. There is no special safety mechanism on the trigger on guns this size because the staple is so small and the gauge of the wire is so fine, so lightweight. Um, it can damage, but, it, but it's, it's not life-threatening typically. I've never seen a serious injury in an upholstery shop. It shoots anywhere from quarter inch to five eighths inch long staples. For the most part in, a, in upholstery, the factories use all half inch and those are just real annoying to take out. You'll see that. We use mostly 3 8 inch because we might need to redo these chairs again in five or ten years and, and uh, the shorter staples you'll be really happy that we use those. But uh, we'll have both the 3 8 and half inch on hand for the job. Whenever you start for the day, whenever you start for a session after lunch, always put a drop or two of oil in the stem of the gun. Just a drop or two, it doesn't need much, but it lubricates all of the um, o-rings in the gun so that it works better and, and adds to the life of the gun. And that comes with the gun. And there's an Allen wrench so that you can make sure that these four lugs are snug and that is what keeps the blade aligned. So you always want to make sure that they're snug. They don't always need to be ch uh, uh, changed but you should check them and make sure that they're snug. Your hose is polyurethane that makes it extra flexible. It's 15 feet long, coiled up. You'll be working pretty much at one station. Uh, to, to connect it, you want to be sure that you're not holding it facing yourself or someone else when you're connecting it because sometimes the gun will fire when the air is first attached. Hold it facing down or near work when you're, when you're, when you're connecting the hose. Uh, the, the way to attach this, if you're not familiar with these, is you pull the collar back. When you pull the collar back, then you insert the nozzle and let the collar go. And you'll, you'll know when it's connected. If it's not, it, it, it will it'll tend to snap off. When these things come loose, they, they, can, they can actually, they're under 90 pounds pressure in the air. They can swing around. It's a heavy brass um, fitting and it. It can bump somebody. This is an unusual tool. It's called a, a Berry's staple remover. It has uh, teeth and a groove and uh, it's used for pulling out staples. We'll show you a close up how to use that. The teeth will, will go under the staple, under the staple, pry it, pry it loose, and then you can even use the same teeth to pull the staple out the rest of the way. Sometimes they break off like that, and that's what the diagonal cutters are handy for. Not so much to cut them off, but to grab and pull them out. If one is cut off too short, or when you're trying to pull it out, if it breaks off, uh, then it leaves a whisker. And that little bit of a whisker doesn't look like much, but that's probably responsible for most of the injuries that happen in an upholstery shop. And so whenever you leave a whisker, good thing to take a, a small hammer, this is a tack hammer, and drive that whisker in. Um, these are diagonal cutters, they're, call, they're, they're called uh, uh, diags, diags. Some people call them dikes, so that you'll, hear, you'll understand why you hear that term sometimes they're referring to diagonal cutters. Um, this particular pair of diagonal cutters is designed so that there's a pair of pliers on the back side of it. Uh, I, I don't like to use that very much because when I'm working sometimes it pinches my finger. And so I don't usually use a pair of diagonal cutters like this. You might want to find a pair of diagonal cutters like this that doesn't have that pair of pliers in it. We'll uh, want to have uh, some flat files and those are handy for touching up the little sharp spots on the chairs that everybody is annoyed by, they catch your clothing. While we're doing this, it's a good opportunity to get those fixed. The friends will be very thankful to you for having done that. For safety, you'll want a pair of gloves. This particular glove is a half glove. That gives me my fingers to work with. And at the same time, if I was to slip off, well, I'm, I'm jabbing a piece of leather there and that's 
that's a big safety issue. So get a pair of half gloves like that or get a pair of leather gloves, cut them off, or get a pair of those um, uh, knit cotton gloves that they're dipped in the latex. Those are useful. My, my glasses are large and so they protect my eyes uh, and they're shatterproof glass. But uh, for those of you who have regular sized glasses, I brought a, an older pair of my glasses and a pair of safety goggles. We really recommend these for people, for all of us, uh, because your eyes are precious and you only get two of them. And while these guns uh, shoot a fine light wire staple, they can penetrate even skin a little bit and certainly would be able to damage eyes. And that's what I'm going to be using today to set the right pace so that you understand that safety is important on this work. And the staple guns, they're not too terribly loud and the compressor will be outside, but the, but the um, noise is a very sharp pecking sound. Bang, bang, bang. And that actually has a worse effect on the ear than, than sustained loud noise. You can hear your grandchildren if you uh, ever are blessed with having those, but only if you protect them while you're younger. And so these uh, uh, antimicrobial foam earplugs, these are, 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 are uh, handy. I got these at a local drugstore, but they're uh, available at gun shops or Walmart has them in the sports section, also drugstores. And uh, you it's soft, and you just roll it, and when you put it into the ear, then it expands, and that, and that closes the ear. Which you can do easily when no one's watching, and it's a little bit harder when you're on film. Uh, we've got a Sharpie to do some marking. These chairs have some black on them. If there's a shiny spot on the staples or on the screws later, you can disguise it with a, sta with a, with a black marker or other color, depending on the color of fabric we're using. This particular set of chairs has black rubbed into the pits of the, of the metal. Great. There's two other uh, safety points that are probably worth mentioning. Um, you're going to do a lot more bending over and moving, especially those in the logistics department than you're used to. It probably, they're not a, there's not a lot of heavy lifting, but there's going to be a lot of twisting and moving and lifting. And so it probably pays to have some kind of support for your uh, back. I wear it when I work. And the other thing is that when you're using these tools, you're holding them in different places and it's touching different parts of your hand than you used to. So I mentioned having a glove to protect uh, this hand from the, the uh, staple puller or screwdriver or uh, diagonal cutter jabbing you in the hand. But this hand will have wear damage, places where the tool is rubbing against you that you're not used to having something rubbing. You won't get a blister if you let us know that it's happening early on. And we'll go ahead and wrap it with, a, with this, this uh, latex. Uh, if, you, if you're allergic to latex, I can't help you. <laughs> but uh, this latex embedded uh, gauze. Uh, uh, a mallet. And the mallet is, I've been using that to show you how to pull staples, but the mallet is used to knock the chair apart. We'll be using about a 10 inch pair of shears on the cutting table. They also come up to 13 inches. And then in your upholstery work, for those who are actually doing upholstery in the chairs, these are called tailor's points. And tailor's points are essentially just the point of the scissors because for little close-in snips and cuts up against the work, these work very well. This is a pair of pocket snips, and it's the same thing but without the point. And uh, I'll be carrying those in my pocket while we work. It's the only one my mommy will let me use. And. Uh, a drill of some sort with a Phillips head bit is used to take the chairs apart. And these are cardboard strips. And these little cardboard strips are used to make tucks in the upholstery job. This tool is called a regulator. You won't use it very much, but it, it becomes very handy when it comes to tucking fabric into corners sometimes. It's useful to have. It's unique to upholstery. Well, those are the things that we need to have to do the job. So I think that's what we should do now. Let's get this chair apart and, uh, and uh, get the job started. There are four screws that hold the seat in place. Sometimes the foam is snug it up against the arms that you have to kind of wiggle it to get it loose. It always pays to have a place that you're putting the screws 
for the seat of the chair. So that later, when it comes time for assembly, you know where they are. That's the seats. The backs are different. There's only two screws in the back. That's all that holds the back. You want a separate container for that. I'll put them in this container over here. You may be able to do this by hand, but you may want a mallet. And that you just knock this up. The chair has a slot cut at the top of this rail. There it goes. And a couple of J hooks. There they are. And these J hooks slide down into the top of this rail where it's been bent. We should do a close up of that. See? And that slides right down into the cutout part of the chair and disappears. So it's kind of an invisible way. See how the chair is made? They bend this up and cut it off. That leaves them a, it's usually pretty sharp. One thing that happens with these J-hooks, so, sometimes all of the pounding that you could do, usually you can lift them off, but sometimes all the pounding you can do won't work because the tip of the upright, the style of the chair, uh, f gets over the top of the J-hook, and so you, it's actually fighting. And you kind of need to push a little bit this way while you lift with your hand down here. So I don't know whether that is going to be important every time you do one of these, but it, you'll, you'll fight a lot less if you understand that this stub end of the J-hook sometimes gets caught right behind here. Okay, one last step to taking this apart is to remove those J-hooks. Keep those separate from the other sets of screws, and the J-hooks themselves probably will fit in the same container if it's large enough. And that's really all there is to taking the chair apart. Alright, so we're going to remove the staples on this. This is the part that local friends are able to help with, and hopefully many of them will show up. Uh, we have about uh, 20 different tools, uh, 10 uh, each of the berries, 10 each of the double rock tools, which I can't demonstrate today, they haven't arrived. But uh, you drive them down behind the staple, the groove catches the staple, and you twist the staple out. And that's it. But you have to do it 7,983 times per chair. The old joke in the upholstery trade is, staples were on sale that week. Ugh. All of these staples, it's amazing that they show when you take the chair apart. They're covered by the metal straps on the chair when the thing is put together. That's a real labor saver when the things are made. And when we reupholster them, we want to be very careful where we put our staples. Well, these are coming out really easily. I'm, I'm thrilled. Uh, it must be a plywood back here. Uh, some of the harder woods, the staples will grab a lot longer and a lot harder. Much more difficult to remove. These are actually pretty easy. And if the fabric is strong enough, sometimes you can pull them loose that way. And uh, you don't even necessarily have to take them out because we're not going to be reusing this fabric for anything. In the corner there's usually two. Ah, there's that cardboard strip that we were talking about. That's, this, is what, this is a procedure called back tacking. You tack the fabric backwards and then pull it down, and that's what gives you that nice clean line at the top of the inside back of the chair. So you'll learn a lot about upholstery by taking it apart. In fact, in big commercial reupholstering shops, stripping is the first job a person gets, along with picking up and delivering. So let's, and we're going to have extra cardboard. You don't necessarily, you don't need to keep the cardboard. Doesn't hurt. In in uh, some shops, people do that, but the cardboard is cheap.
I've never never reused it. Here's another reason why it's good to have goggles on. You may be careful with what you're doing, but if somebody across the room is pulling out a staple and the staple goes flying, you know, they don't really know which direction it's going to go. So it's another good reason to protect your eyes. Okay, so that's the end of the back here. We're about ready to turn it over. There's some fancy pleats up here. We'll show you those when we actually get to upholstering the chair. But uh, here is, th this is actually one piece of fabric. I suspected as much before I took it apart, and that's how we cut and sewed it. And, uh, or actually didn't, didn't sew this. But uh, there's some of that cardboard holding the, holding the one layer back so that it shows up as a separate piece. And that can all come off. And that's it. So now the back is shipped. This can cardboard is really not important uh, for reupholstering. It has some law tag information on it that's required on new furniture in some states. And, um, and also it's advertising for the name of the company that built the chair. Um, they used to use black cambric, a black fabric on the bottom of chairs like that. Uh, in the old days when a chair was stuffed with horsehair, it would keep the dust from coming out, so it was called the dust cover. It keeps fabric pieces from st sticking down or little threads from hanging off, but other than that, that, that is not an important piece. We will use some black fabric to cover it. We don't have the cardboard pieces. Staple, 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 staple. So that's the seat. Even after the whiskers are taken care of, you be careful with your hands because there's always splinters. So here's the frame, stripped. Originally, the staples never even got driven in. Nobody noticed that over all those years. The new foam will have a layer, about a three-quarter inch layer of Dacron on it. And uh, it should be the right length. A couple of staples across the front will hold it in, hold it in place. Then it should be just about the right length. Check it. You may want to just trim that. There's no need for extra going across. In fact, on the, on the chairs originally, there was no deck. But that gives a little softness, a little body, and a little luff to the fabric. On the cover, the long tail goes to the front. Turn them inside out. The selvage goes to the front so that the open edge of the seam goes to the side. It's prettiest that way. Back here, the selvage goes to the front, so that the open edge goes toward the back. Now, you're the right depth when about a half an inch of this is going over the top edge in the front corner, and when the seam there is right on the corner. A couple staples. However far that's pulled there, that's how far you want it pulled back here. So it's approximately the same. So whatever's going over there is about that much of my finger here. So there's that much of my finger there too. It's a good way to measure it. And I'm going to put one on both corners. Now, here's where the cut, this is the only cut. Even put a staple here first. Pin this in place, pull the slack back that way, and the cut is right to that corner. I think. And then this goes in here. And this goes. And that keeps that closed. The excess all goes to the back. So in upholstery, as a principle, you put a staple in. Bring the fabric up, pull it all in one direction, get all the slack out, and I use my hand to hold it all up in place. If you, if you pull and staple where you pull, then you get a bunch of pull marks. You can, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but you'll get, you'll get wavy pull marks. It's not a track. I've pulled this up, laid this over, now I've got excess here, and bring it snug and staple, and bring it right down to this corner, and that'll cover 
where my cut was, right down to there, and I can put a staple right in that corner. And one here. Same thing on this side. And then brush this up. Again, I don't want to staple where I pull. And they had staples right along this edge. You don't use too many. Most commercial staple shops, upholstery shops, <laughs> use too many staples. That's plenty. And a couple, I don't have to go dead in the corner like that, but just a couple close to the corner to keep that fabric snug against the rail. Last of all, check the shape of that. Bring this back, and you'll see by the grain of the fabric when, when what you have here in the grain of the fabric is what you have back here. Pull that over, get your slack all in the corners, and that leaves the middle part to do it. Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my hand to hold it. And that's a new, new chair seat. Okay, looks great. All right, typically you'll have black cambric cut for the job and just tuck it in place. And this really doesn't have to be too special. And now we're gonna do the back. Check them out, they're in good shape. There's nothing wrong with this piece of wood. We've had a mark put on at four and a quarter inches from the end. And uh, we've, we've marked it several times across the piece. So, and that's important for, that's a measurement for our fabric. We've had a sew line put on here. I mentioned it earlier. And there it is. And so you're gonna fold this fabric back on that sew line. It could be a chalk line if we don't have the sewers do it. This fabric is going to be centered side to side pretty close. You're going to have a little bit of slack. It's not going to have to be perfect. But you can kind of tell by your hands when you've got it the right distance. And fold it on that sew line and put that sew line right on the four and a quarter inch mark. Staple it. And shortest distance between two lines is uh, two dots is a straight line, so there, that gives us a nice straight line. Hold that in place. Doesn't need many. And at this point, you're probably better off with half inch staples. And I've got a piece of cardboard that I've already torn off to, no, I haven't, to the right size. And I lay that right up against the edge of the folded edge of the fabric, and a couple staples. And then a couple staples along the way. You want the half inch here because you're going to be going through two layers of fabric and the cardboard. The foam that's here is the original foam that was there. We're not going to replace the foam on these, but we are going to add Dacron polyester batting. And that also, you center, bring the cut edge of that right down to the, to the edge of the cardboard, to the lower edge of the cardboard, and you want your staples here to go right through the... If you pull back on the Dacron, it'll open up and you're going to staple right in the middle of it. So you're just catching part of the Dacron. But that, holds it down and see how that heals itself right over that just heals right over and you don't have to worry about the bumps in front of the staples showing through the cover of the fabric there you go now you really essentially have two pieces of fabric now the bottom fabric and the top fabric do the, the bottom fabric because it's the easiest just pull it up snug pull it over the top Oh, I wish I had 3 8 inch staples for the rest of this job. If you pull it to the right, pull it to the left, pull the fabric to the right and to the left, you'll see when it's just lined up straight. And that's close enough. 
pull it over snug. There's no stuffing under there. A couple staples in the middle, pull it over snug, pull this way. Gets all the slack out. That's it. Then just brush it up and over with your hand to get the slack out of it. Now we're going to do the same thing for the top. We'll bring the Dacron over and just a couple of staples to hold it all in place. You can pull it pretty snug because you're the, the the Dacron adds a a lot of forgiveness in this. And I'm staying up pretty close to that corner because that's I've got to be snug there in order for my J hook to fit and for the cardboard for the outside back to fit. So I started in the middle, and as you can see, I'm pulling all in one way toward an open edge. So if there's any slack, I can get rid of it. Now you can see it's starting to show the shapes of the chair. Oh, what do we have to do to finish it? I've left quite a bit of that open. We're going to bring the Dacron over. This cut edge of the Dacron is equal to the cut edges of the wood. The extra Dacron is completely unneeded. Don't cut through a staple, please. If you ruin a pair of shears, you've bought that pair of shears. <laughs> now, if I do too much pulling this way, it's not going to be lined up. So I want to get it pretty well lined up and pull it half of it this way. Bring the slack around. Hold it with your fingers. A few staples here. I'm only stapling right in the edge in the area that's the that's the widest because down here you've got to well there it is see how that pleat disappears that gets rid of all the excess fabric that curve in there gets rid of all your excess fabric So I've brought the fabric around this way to get the slack. I've brought the fabric to the sides straight. The grain is running centered. This is not a not padded at all, but I want to show something about this side. I brought this over snug, it centered it, brought it over snug. The top edge, the edge, goes over flat. And then this staple goes at an angle, 45. And that way you can pleat this and bring it over and it covers the work here makes a nice pleat there and nice straight clean lines there so need a couple of staples here, here. okay now remember I told you that there was a pleat that there's a pleat here you know where the two pieces of fabric go together and showed you how that looked on the back well here's why that's handy any excess fabric can kind of get hidden there and that suits us fine because in this particular case we've got some and rather than take the whole thing apart I a little bit extra fabric there this cuts cut off it's in the way this gets cut off it's in the way so what's left on this is the top corners and I'm bringing all of this up and toward the corner. You can always take slack towards a corner. So I'm bringing all of this up towards the corner. Got a straight line there, right up to that corner. And this 
goes up. There's a staple at a 40 at a 45 degree angle on the top, and a pleat and one on the back. Where are my points? Taylor's points. I get rid of some of this excess fabric that I don't need. This part hangs off the edge. I leave some that I can tuck under. And look how I hide the work that I just did. That background can get torn out of the way. Hide the work that I just did. There it is. There it is. Notice that the guys who made these originally didn't do a lot of trim, trimming. They just pleated it, tucked it in the way. So it works to leave that, but it leaves a little bit of a lump. And trimming it gets rid of that, some of that. So it's done. It's done. The outside back is going to cover all of that. The wood or the metal style that comes up where the J hook is going to cover all the work here. And there's our new back. Isn't that cute? And it's a little bit softer, a little bit plusher. People will notice that difference. It's only a Three eighths or five, five uh, half inch to three quarter inch of Dacron, so it doesn't mean much stuffing wise, but it's softer and it'll feel more plush. So people will feel like they've got a better quality chair. The first line of staples on the back. This is cut exactly the width that you need, just exactly that width, just where your staples will go. So they're just going to pretty much go right on the edge of this this fabric. And it needs to be, feel the edge of the wood here. You'll feel the wood and you want this lined up with the, centered on that, just inside the edge of that wood. About a half an inch there. And here again, I'm going to want half inch staples. So I've got three eighths to start with. I'm going to put a few to hold it in place. And then I'm going to disconnect the air so I can put half inch staples in. And there's my cardboard strip. Cardboard strip needs to be shorter than the than the uh, fabric, so it doesn't stick out and show. And snug that right up into that corner, and use a couple of staples, and snug it up all the way along. The cardboard. Gives you a straight, clean line there. I put two in the corner. And when you pull this back, see how that is so nicely healed there, where the outside back and the inside back meet? This comes straight down, staple it at the top, pull it straight down, staple it at the bottom, fill in the blank, pull it at the top, pull it straight down, staple it at the bottom, fill in the blank. Those staples are all going to be color covered. By the way, I just slipped and said the word colored because you can, if you choose, for these outside back staples, just as a precaution, in case they happen to show, you can color this, the, the uh, staples. If we, if we have enough manpower and, and the right color uh, markers, we may go ahead and color the staples that get used on the outside back there. And that way they won't flash bright silver if they do show at all. Cheat in the upholstery shop. I see I made a mistake. I should have brought the side in first and then brought the back down because that will show. So I'm going to just color that in case it shows. I'm afraid that that's going to show. So I'm just going to color that staple. And I'm also worried about this one right here. We will, we will probably plan to cut this fabric right where it needs to be so that you don't have to do any fancy folding here. It's 
that's it. So we've completely upholstered the inside, outside, back, and the seat. Let's uh, put it together. There are three size screws. The two smallest screws are for the, outs the inside back assembly when you put it on. The four medium sized screws hold the J hooks. The long screws hold the seat. J hooks go right up in place. So here's the edge of the wood. The J hook goes down an eighth of an inch from the corner, in about a quarter of an inch. And uh, you'll have to try a few of these before you'll get them right. The, the, the logistics department will be doing the assembly and the disassembly. The first screw at the top lets you still move it a little bit, you know, and get it just where you need it to be. That's it. All right. So we're ready for final. At this point, all the pieces are upholstered and made and we're ready for the final assembly. We've worked hard to get the J-hooks lined up. They are lined up. Pretty much the edge of this and the edge of that, that's the line that's going to get covered, so we're going to want the J-hooks to be in that vicinity. One J-hook said to the other J-hook. That's it. That's in. Isn't that gorgeous? Nothing is showing, not even the staple that I covered. Eh, maybe that one little staple that I covered there. There's one. There's the other. Isn't that great? Doesn't that look nice and plush? Oh, good. Here's the seat. The seat goes in place. This will get pushed back against the rail. Someone has taken a, a file and checked all of the metal on this already for us. So we can just go to assembly. Probably this is a two-man job. There's our finished chair. Yeah, another job for the logistics department, uh, log logistics crew, although maybe others will help with it. There are staples on the floor here. Now we're working in a hall that has a tile floor in the library, and that's for our second school, and that's fine. But if we're working on carpet, we're going to roll six mil plastic down and work on top of that plastic. You don't want the staples grinding in and getting stuck in the, in the carpet. They won't pull out. But on this surface or on the plastic, you just roll the magnet here. They'll just jump right up onto the staple gun, onto the, onto the uh, magnet. And so we'll roll the entire floor, last thing. And all of those staples will pick up. And let's show you that on the table. There they all are, right stuck to the bottom. And when we're ready, we remove the, staple, remove the magnet and we can get rid of those easily. So that's a big help to the cleaner. Oh. All right, I'm gonna change my glasses too. These are not my glasses, I can't see worth a tinker's dab. Well, I, uh, I found that invigorating. I hope that you enjoyed the experience, got a better idea, uh, an overview of what it is that needs to be done, how the tools work, how the job is. Uh, ten, we are going to have ten upholstery guns. We took about 30 minutes to do this chair. And uh, so two, one person, 30 minutes, they'll do two chairs an hour. Ten guns, two chairs an hour. That's 20 chairs an hour. So we think that uh, 250 uh, chairs, 25 people, they should be able to be done easily in 10 hours, maybe less. Now, uh, there will be other people cutting and sewing and doing the cleaning up and the logistics during that same period of time. So we really think that, that 10 hours will be enough for the whole job, maybe 12 if you include pickup, delivery, cleanup, and so forth of the, of the area. We're glad you came along and hope that you found this informative. The summer wind warms
summer wind. Um, work hard to embed that in your mind consciously.